Does this sound too good to be true? Well, it isn't. You can chat with practically an unlimited number of AI characters, all locally on your own PC, without your conversation data ever leaving your computer. Not only that, but the software you're going to use for that is 100% free and open source, and you don't need a lot of VRAM to run it. In fact, I'm running the software on my NVIDIA 2070 Super, and as you can see, I'm getting almost instant text generation with that, with small context windows. Later in this guide, I will also show you how to ensure that your generation speeds are up to this standard. The text generation web UI, which we're using here, lets you do much more than just chat with your AI assistant. You can use its inbuilt notebook to continue a text you've written, make it solve problems with additional information input, create your very own characters, use it for some extra inspiration when you're writing, and much more. There are also a lot of different extension plugins available, including the ones which can give each of your custom characters their very own voice. If I got you interested, let's get to the installation process. First, let's simply get to the official Ubabuga Web UI GitHub repository. If you have Git installed on your PC, you can simply clone the repository to any directory you'd like. If not, scroll down until you see the download button. Once you click it, it will download a zip archive containing a one-click installer for the program. Extract the archive to the directory you want the web UI to get installed in. Once the files are extracted, you want to search for the start windows bat file if you're on a Windows machine, of course. Once you find it, double-click it to initiate the installation process. A Microsoft Defender window might pop up. If that's the case for you, click on More Info and then on Run Anyway. The installation script will now attempt to download the dependencies required for the software to work. After a while, it will stop and ask you a very important question, and that has to do with what GPU you're using. As I'm using an NVIDIA graphics card, I'll select the first option by typing in A and pressing Enter. The second question is whether or not you want to use the previous version of the CUDA drivers. If your GPU isn't listed here, select No. The installation process will continue. It might take quite a while, because now it needs to download all the remaining dependencies required for the software to work. Sit back and relax. Once the installation process is finished, the web UI should start automatically. If it doesn't, you can always run the start windows bat file again. Once the program starts, you will be notified that it is now running on a local URL. Copy and paste this address to your web browser and hit enter to connect to the application. Remember not to close the console window. It is the main program after all. If you do close it, you'll terminate the process. Once you've connected to the web UI, you'll notice the main chat interface. But it won't work just yet. We need a language model to run after all. After we'll download it in a short while, here is where we're going to load it. The thing with various open source large language models is that there are a lot of them. And I mean it. And don't even get me started on how many types of them are out there. Different models, different model loaders, different technologies connected with that, and then the technical requirements to run each of them is a topic for a whole different video. If you want a good resource holding, well, hundreds of different models mostly compatible with the Ubabuga Web UI, I recommend you check out Tom Jobbins or the blog on Hugging Face. He has collected a large number of open source models, from which I've successfully tested quite a few. To quickly get you started, I will recommend you one model that will work on your GPU even if you have only 8GB of VRAM. It's one of the versions of the Dolphin model, which I'll link in the description below. Luckily for us, the Ubabuga Web UI has its own model downloader, which is compatible with Hugging Face. This means that we don't have to clone these files using Git, and rather, we just need to copy the link over to the Web UI. I'll show you exactly how to do that. Go over to the repository containing the model you're interested in, in our case it's the Dolphin 2.6, and then copy the link excluding the three main section. Just like that. Go over to the web UI, and in the model tab you'll see the download section on the right. Now, all you need to do is to paste that link you've copied, and then click on download. Depending on how large the model is, it will take some time to download it, so just wait patiently until it's done. I'll just conveniently skip to the end here.
Once the process is finished, the model will get saved to the directory you've installed the web UI in and you'll be able to load it right away. Well, actually, there's one more thing that you need to do. You need to hit the refresh button to see the model on the list in the web UI. Click on the model to check out its loading settings. And for now, there is only one setting that will be of interest to us. And that setting is the max sequence length or the context length of the model. This is a very important setting. The higher you set it, the more tokens or the more information can the model remember when you're chatting with it. This includes all the prompt context info and all the things that you tell the model within the conversation. So why not just crank that all the way up and have the model remember everything you say to it? Well, there is one drawback. The higher you set this parameter or the larger you make the context window, the more VRAM you need to run the model efficiently. I'll show you exactly what I mean. First, I will try to load our model with a very large context window, exceeding our available VRAM in the process. On Windows for monitoring the VRAM usage, you can use the Task Manager. Get into the GPU tab, start loading a model in the web UI, and then you'll see that the dedicated GPU memory, that is your VRAM, starts to get filled up by the model, which is now being loaded from your drive straight to the GPU memory. Well, what happens if the model is simply larger than your VRAM can hold, or the context window is set so high that the model will attempt to take up more VRAM than it physically has on the card? Well, depending on the version of your NVIDIA drivers, two things can happen. The first thing is the application, in our case the web UI, throwing a CUDA out of memory error. In this case, you won't be able to load the model at all. In the second case, as you'll see in the task manager in a second, the amount of data that won't be able to fit in VRAM, that is within the physical GPU memory, will get offloaded into the system RAM. If you look closely, you can see it happening right now. The dedicated GPU memory is full and the rest of the data from the model is getting loaded to the shared GPU memory. The shared GPU memory is simply a part of your system RAM which is borrowed for a while by your GPU to store its data in there. There is one huge downside to this. Transporting the data for calculation between your system RAM and your GPU is substantially slower than transporting the same amount of data within the constraints of your GPU. What this means in practice is whenever your model data gets offloaded to the shared GPU memory, so to your system RAM, the generation will be much, much slower than it would have been if all of your model data fit perfectly within your GPU VRAM. As you can see, the response takes very long to generate. Curiously, it's one of the main reasons that people give up on the software saying, well, I have a 4090 and it still doesn't work well. If you want to prevent that from happening and get the best speeds you can on your hardware, you need to make sure that in the end, your loaded model won't take up more space than your physical VRAM and your graphics card has to offer. This depends on quite a few different factors including how large the model is in the beginning, what type of a model it is and what method you use to load it, and the sequence length, context length or context window setting. The higher you set them, the more information can the model retain during the conversation, but the more VRAM you need for loading it. As you can see on the screen, when even some of the model data resides in the shared GPU memory or in system RAM, the generation can be painfully slow even on very capable hardware. So now, let's unload the model and then decrease the context length without changing any other model load settings. While 1024 is pretty low, it will do for the test. To monitor my VRAM usage, I fire up the task manager once again and pay close attention to the dedicated GPU memory value. This time, I don't want it to exceed the 8GB of VRAM, so the physical constraints of the VRAM I have on board. And lo and behold, we did it. Now let's test the generation speed again. As you can see now, the generation is almost instant. In a moment, we'll be able to compare it with the previous values. The fact you can reach these speeds with a pretty dated GPU like mine, and with a pretty capable language model, is really something. While in the first test we were getting up to 8 tokens per second, going even as low as 2, now we are able to reach up to 22 tokens per second. Nice. Once you know all this, we can safely get back on track. So, before you hit that load button, make sure that you've closed all the apps that may take up your video memory, fire up the task manager, and then choose a sequence length value that will make our Dolphin model fit perfectly in your GPU VRAM. You'll be happy to hear that once you've loaded the model, all is good. You can continue on your own and explore, or keep watching this video to see what else the WebUI has to offer.
The most important part of the program is without a doubt the main chat interface. You have the option to regenerate the messages as many times as you want, to impersonate the AI in the conversation or have the AI impersonate you, remove and edit messages, import and create different characters, and tweak tens of different settings you can find in the parameters tab. If you want to delete your conversation log, make sure your current chat is selected in the top left corner and then press the trash can button. Press confirm and the local log will be deleted. Speaking of different characters, there is one already there for you. Scroll down and beneath the chat interface you'll find the character gallery. Once you're there, click on the example character to load it. The characters here are pretty much JSON files containing all of the character's background context and information and they can be freely edited from the web UI itself. Each character consists of its profile picture, its name, its context, so all the information about its personality, appearance, alongside with example dialogue, and a short greeting. As I've already said, you can edit all of this from within the web UI. Moreover, you can also edit your own character, inputting the details of your appearance, personality, and all the things that should be known by the AI. You can even set your own profile image. The web UI also features many useful and fun notepad templates, including a simple Q&A, a response with additional input, and a preset which is supposed to generate a fortune-like thread, but with the dolphin model loaded, it proceeds to generate the least fortune-like conversation I've seen in my entire life. Depending on the model you use, the notepad can be a really fun tool. You can use it for writing short stories, scripts, or just for fun. The web UI also gives you an option of fine-tuning your models. You can do that training your very own low-rank adaptation models using the built-in tool. Other than that, there are also a lot of different extensions available. These enable you to give your AI assistant a voice, make it analyze and understand documents and images, and much more. Have fun enjoying your very own private AI assistant. And if I helped you at least a bit, please leave a like or a comment down below. Thank you. See ya.